Okay, well, hello everyone. Professor Cacanero here, and uh, it's time for another uh, uh, another edition of uh, of uh, uh, re reviewing the uh, the readings from uh, the Daughter of Fortune story. We're getting close uh, to, uh, getting close uh, to to the end here. Um, <clears throat> we're wrapping things up in terms of uh, what happens with uh, Eliza da Dao Jian, uh, J John Summers, uh, J Jacob Ta pa pa Paulina, and so many other other characters in the story as. Uh, uh, as we get more and more into the uh, uh, into the heart of the uh, heart of the 1850s, uh, and of course the 1850s, and into the Civil War, that's where the class is going to be uh, is going to be wrapping up. So uh, there's a little bit more continuity right now, I, I'd say, with uh, with these uh, final uh, final few uh, readings uh, from the daughter of, of daughter of a fortune story. And in the in this video, in this installment, I'm going to go ahead and talk about the readings uh, that that's chapters. Uh, 15, 16, and 17. Uh, these were the pages 269 to 314, and the uh, chapter names that, that coincided uh, coincided with the uh, with the readings. These are the chapters: El, El Dorado, Business Dealings, and Soil Doves. And the time frame we're looking at is uh, uh, is from 1850 to 1853, as uh, these uh, three chapters start uh, part three of the Daughter of Fortune story. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, and, uh, 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 and get to it. <clears throat> This video, I think, shouldn't be as long as last week's video, since last week uh, I spent quite a bit of time talking about four chapters. That video ran a little bit longer than uh, than I had uh, than I was actually uh, actually anticipating. But then again, I wasn't too surprised that, that it got to that length. But I'll try to keep the length uh, at, at roughly no more than about the 20, uh, 22 minutes of maximum. Okay, let's go ahead and start off with uh, the El Dorado chapters, chapter fifteen, and the scene is a uh, late of uh, eighteen. Uh, uh, is a uh, late November 1849, and uh, Eliza encounters a very wild scene in which we have a, a bear and uh, and bull uh, fighting each other in, in in a bull ring. And actually, these types of events happened during the uh, Mexican period in uh, in, in Cal California. The Californios, uh, for their part, the Mexican Californians, uh, I guess you could say they were a bit of a rough and tumble type of uh, type of crowd. Uh, you could say that, that they that they work hard, so not surprising they, they partied hard afterward. A lot of a uh, a lot of uh, uh, ceremonies and dances and festivals, dances like the uh, uh, tertulias and fan fandangos. Those were some of the uh, popular cultural pastimes going on. And interestingly, it's during this time uh, in the Mexican California period from the the uh, early eighteen twenties all the way up until the uh, to, uh, up until the mid, 18, mid to late 1840s, even after the uh, area was uh, ceded over to the U.S. following the end of the U.S.-Mexico War, this was the time where a lot of uh, a lot of Anglo Americans, Americans from the uh, uh, from the, the from the East Coast, from the New England states, uh, and all people from the Midwest and people from the South too, they were uh, riding, uh, they were coming into California, uh, and uh, especially the New Englanders, they married into the California families and wrote back stories about what they saw. Uh, off, off, uh, on, on the one hand, they, they, they praised the hospitality of their California host, but they also uh, lamented the fact, well, well these Californios, uh, all they do is drink and they dance and they're, they're, they're drunk, they're lazy, they're, um, they, they don't take care of the land, blah, blah, blah. They'll just think, uh, uh, cousin, cousin George, if we came over here, look at all the things that we could do uh, to, the, to the land. We could make the land, we could make the land bountiful, make the land profitable, that type of notion. So uh, some of the... Uh, some of the negative views that uh, uh, people from the United States had vis-a-vis uh, -vis California, a lot of those reports were going back to the uh, to the rest of the U.S. Uh, starting as early as in, in the 1820s, and that of course carried on into the 1840s uh, as uh, 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 as well. Uh, getting back to the story itself, uh, Eliza had ridden the length of, of the mother load visiting such towns as uh, Mariposa and, and Downeyville uh, and back again. She you know she tries to blend in with with, with the miners and of course she poses as a uh, as 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 a young boy. And again, there's a recurring theme of somebody uh, reinventing what, what, what oneself. Uh, Eliza finds that she has to pose. She has to uh, you might say uh, alter her her gender in order to fit in and experience some more uh, more freedom, uh, so to speak. Um, <clears throat> Interesting because of her, of her literary skills. Of course, a lot of stuff that she picked up uh, that, that she picked up uh, with the uh, with, with the Summers family, especially with with, with Rose. Um, the fact that she can read and read passages from the Bible that earns her much respect among the miners, and uh, uh, and also her her letter writing, her ability, ability to, to write letters that definitely comes in uh, uh, comes in handy too. Ayanda makes an interesting observation that. Uh, 
in her travels, as Eliza encounters many characters, uh, Allende writes that she had fallen in, in love with, uh, with, with freedom, and she contrasted uh, her life compared to being confined in the atmosphere in the, uh, in, in the Summers home. Eliza writes about how people are inventing equality and want to uh, and want to uh, and want to be uh, want to uh, and uh, wants to, wants to be one of them. So interestingly, uh, again, she can't be a woman to experience e equality. She has to be uh, she has to be a, 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 a man. Um, but again, that goes to the whole notion of uh, reinventing oneself, and it's a theme that I'll pick up. I'll touch up upon in a, a few more times during the course of this uh, during this course of this video. But interestingly, as Eliza is experiencing this independent spirit, Joaquin is still uh, still on, on, on her mind, and she's uh, she's still trying to uh, she's still trying to uh, to uh, track 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 him down. Okay, uh, let's see what else about chapter uh, <clears throat> uh, 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 chapter uh, about uh, chapter chapter fifteen. Oh. Uh, <clears throat> It's during this time where she encounters the uh, the traveling a uh, wild show, the wild uh, body show led by uh, led by the lady with the interesting name of Joe Bone Crusher. And again, here's an interesting case right here where again we have a woman where uh, where apparently there's a woman who's reinventing herself. But even though everybody knows that that she's a woman, she's got the name of of of, of a man. So gender roles you might see are really being turned upside down uh, and twisted left and right, up and down, left right, sideways, and in, in between, so on and so forth. But I think that goes to the general uh, tone of what California is uh, is meaning to a lot of people, not just from the United States, but from other parts of the world at this point in time. California, you might say, upends a lot of the roles of uh, of of a uh, normal society of the uh, social uh, strictures at at, at 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 the time, and I make the observation that what's happening in California today definitely uh, definitely uh, fits into the into that mold. So I guess uh, some things never change, right? But the more things change, the more they uh, uh, the more they stay the same. And because Eliza has a uh, great uh, musical skills, she offers to play the piano for the for the group, and she meets some of the interesting characters from the. Uh, 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 from the uh, traveling show, among them was a was a crazy guy from Chicago by the name of Baba Lou the uh, Baba Lou the Baba Lou the Bad. Uh, I don't know, kind of, uh, I'm kind of curious as to where Eliza got the uh, motivation. Maybe maybe she might have listened to the classic song by uh, Jim Croce, uh, "Bad Bad Lee Le 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 Brown." Lee Le Brown, the if you know the song, he was from the south side of, of Chicago, and Baba Lou is from from Chicago. So I kind of I kind of wonder if uh, I end the subconsciously. Maybe it was she was listening to Jim Croce when that name uh, when that name popped up. All right, um, <clears throat> uh, chapter sixteen is a chapter called Business Dealings, and uh, at this point in time, uh, here we are in uh, here we are in uh, early uh, um, early eighteen fifty, and uh, John Summers arrives in San Francisco with a lot of the goods that Paulina had entrusted him to uh, uh, to bring a lot of the foodstuffs that I mentioned in the previous video, and of course a lot of the a lot of the I I I ice too. Uh, but one of the things that was brought on the ship was was also the erotic books, the naughty books. So here's a, here's a segment right here where Ayanda realizes that you know uh, people are driven by their basic instincts, their uh, uh, their uh, their primal uh, uh, primal feelings, their primal emotions, and of course uh, love, sex, lust, all of that fun stuff that definitely fits into the uh, picture as, as well. And not surprisingly, uh, those uh, uh, those uh, naughty books uh, sell quite quickly when they go into the open market there in there in in, the, in San Francisco. John then meets up with the Rodriguez uh, brothers and, uh, uh, and and tells Feliciano that uh, there's no way of stopping his wife Paulina. Paulina is uh, determined to come to San Francisco and really make uh, make a, a name for herself. So here's a, here's an example right here of uh, how Paulina is really further in reinventing herself as a uh, uh, as a powerful and a uh, enterprising uh, business woman. <clears throat> Okay. Later on in chapter sixteen, uh, John uh, John meets uh, Jacob Todd. Jacob is now a writer, a uh, uh, writer on uh, 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 the Gold Rush, and now he changed his name to Jacob Fremont. So here's another example of someone reinventing uh, himself. And in this case, uh, the the last name taken is is, is Fremont. Uh, interesting there because you, you can, I think you can make uh, two observations on that. Of course, in American history, the famous uh, pathfinder John C. Fremont was of course. Uh, was of course one of the early movers and shakers uh, that helped that helped you might say propel the United States uh, to a war against uh, uh, 
against Me 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 Mexico. But I think the name of Fremont too, you might say, conjures up the image, the ideology of someone being being free, being free from normal society, from all the uh, standards at the time. And of course, as we, as we seen throughout the story, Jacob is constantly getting in, into trouble. But it, but it's a clear example of how someone is outside the norms of, of, of the norms of, of society. And as the story unfolds, we'll see a few more examples of how Jacob experience, uh, experiences of, of this. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, um, John, of course, uh, talks to Jacob. Of course, there's a much more pressing matter to deal with. And that, of course, is the, uh, is the disappearance of, 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 of Eliza. And Jacob says that he will do whatever he can to try to uh, track her down. Uh, meanwhile, Eliza is back with the uh, with the, with the traveling with the traveling uh, caravan a caravan show, and she finds a, a home with this uh, motley uh, motley collection of, of, of people. Uh, Joe Boca, should we find out she's a uh, Pennsylvania uh, Dutch woman? So we, we we can make the assumption that maybe she's of the uh, Amish uh, uh, Amish people, the the Mennonites, uh, those groups that that you associate with the uh, Pennsylvania Dutch country. Uh, we also come across the two uh, soil do dove girls. Uh, these are, which included two sisters from Missouri and uh, and, and a Mexican girl, and uh, 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 and then uh, what, what else we have here? Oh, Joe and the girls. Uh, they they have their own perspective about Eliza. I think that Eliza is a homosexual boy, and uh, uh, Babalu. Uh, she, he tries to teach Eliza how to uh, how to shoot properly, and as I mentioned, we find out that Babalu he's an ex-convict from Chicago. Okay, all right. Uh, speaking of soul doves, that's the last chapter of this uh, this video I want to talk about. That's uh, that's uh, that's chapter chapter seventeen, and the time the time frame that we're looking at here is uh, <clears throat> the time frame we're look, we're looking at here is December of uh, December of, of eighteen fifty. Uh, at this time, Joe and the girls settle into a barn for the rainy season, and the uh, one character they also meet is an interesting, uh, uh, interesting uh, blacksmith by the name of James Morton. James Morton is a uh, uh, is a Quaker with an abolitionist past. So now these stories about abolitionism, uh, of course, which is a major, a uh, major, a dominant theme in the. Uh, in, in the United States at this time, as we've been finding out in the Who Built America readings, we see where uh, we, we see where uh, uh, anti-slavery views are filtering into the story, and this will be an important thing too as we get further and further, or at least toward the concluding chapters of the uh, the concluding chapters of, 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 of the story. Uh, January that, that is uh, it, it's a very harsh winter, and in January the region region had suffered a. Uh, through a horrific freeze, and tensions between the Yankee miners and the Chileans were really uh, exploding. Uh, so, as I mentioned in some of the earlier videos, tensions among the miners really started started to uh, accelerate. Uh, Americans versus Mexicans, Australians got into the mix too. They were, you might say, uh, quite a bit of a rough and tumble of uh, group of characters. Uh, I say a few more things about a lot of the stuff, the vigilante, uh, 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 vigilante justice that happened in uh, San Francisco, Northern California back in those days. I say a few more things about that in the History 124 section. Um, now, in, in, in the barn, we find out that the group encounters a half-frozen Mexican by the name, of, by the name of, of, of Jack. And Jack was an interesting character. He was uh, on, on the run, didn't, uh, didn't really say too much, but we find out that his uh, fingers uh, had gotten gangrene on them and, of course, uh, and of course had, had to be, uh, uh, had to be uh, a a a amputated. Um, Eliza, picking up on some of the lessons that she observed when she was watching Dao, uh, of course, who had all the uh, medicinal skills of, 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 of herbs, med, med, medicines, and things of that nature, by watching uh, watching Dao, Eliza was able to uh, uh, was able to uh, uh, was able to uh, cut cut off uh, Jack's uh, uh, Jack's finger. Not, uh, not 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 exactly a, a pretty sight, uh, but it was definitely something that uh, something that uh, that uh, that had, had to be had had to be done. <clears throat> Okay, uh, let me see. I kind of lost my place here. Just a second here, everybody. Okay, uh, we get into uh, we get into March of uh, uh, we get into March at, at, at this time, and uh, uh, Eliza is now eight is now uh, eighteen year, year, years old, and uh, this this uh, and this Jack this uh, Jack, Jack character. It turns out uh, he he is part of a. Uh, He's part of a a, a posse, uh, a, someone, a, someone, a, a someone, a probably running with with a gang uh, led, led by this guy, led by this guy named, named jo 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 Joaquin. And uh, this is actually part of the of a California legend, the legend of 
Joaquin Murrieta. Joaquin Murrieta was said to be a uh, uh, was said to be a uh, uh, a Mexican bandit who uh, roamed the uh, gold country. He was avenging the injustices inflicted uh, upon the Mexican miners by Yankee uh, by Yankee vigilantes and. Uh, Joaquin uh, and his men exact, exacted vengeance against them, and the one uh, supposedly in the story who was the most brutal at uh, uh, at, uh, at uh, mutilating people, uh, killing people, uh, and taking and really taking a lot of great pleasure, in fact, in killing in uh, in torturing Chinese, was a guy by the name of Three Finger Jack G -G Garcia. Uh, so what's happening now is Allende is actually bringing in a famous California myth into the story, and she's putting her own spin as to where Jack uh, got the, uh, that is, uh, that is went from five fingers to three fingers. So interesting perspective there, there from, uh, uh, on Allende's part in terms of bringing in this famous uh, California, uh, uh, California, uh, uh, California le le legend. Uh, at the end of, of the chapter, we uh, see a, a near tragedy in which a fire destroys the barn and all of uh, Joe's possession possessions and uh, the young Indian boy from that uh, from the uh, group from the group a boy by the name of Tom no try he was almost killed in the fire and uh, this orphan Indian is also an interesting development too because this shows uh, this it goes to, to the uh, to the fact that we're seeing a, a genocide take place on the California populations inflicted by the the Yankee miners and to a lesser extent the, the Australian miners but of course the anglo-american miners are the ones who committed all sorts of uh, uh, nasty, uh, brutal a activities against uh, uh, not just the Mexicans, but but of course the indigenous uh, po populations. Now I get into a lot more of this stuff in the History 124 class, but the fact that we have a young man uh, by the name of Tom and and his nickname and uh, Tom No Tribe that seems to indicate that Tom is is orphaned, he's separate from from his from from his uh, f family, uh, most likely most likely because of the violence that had been inflicted on the native populations by the Anglo-American miners. So again, an interesting, interesting twist of the, the, there. Uh, when the fire was raging, Babalu had to rescue both him and, and Eliza. Uh, but interestingly, the people of, of the town, including a James Wharton and the, preach, and the preacher's wife, they rallied around Joe and the group and helped him set up with, with a new house. So um, what's happening right, uh, right here is that here's a clear example of how People are putting aside their uh, their their differences. The, you might say their preconceived notions, uh, uh, their uh, uh, prescribed standards on how they should view view uh, view view others. Oh, uh, 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 she, she's a, she's a prostitute. We, we we can't we can't take care of her. She's dirty. That's an Indian boy. We can't take take care of him. Uh, and uh, uh, this. Uh, uh, there, there, there's a, a homosexual boy. We can't take care of him. Blah blah blah. No, Allende is discarding all, all, all of that and uh, really bringing about this notion that that uh, that in California, again, as I said at the earlier in the video, people are escaping their uh, their old their uh, their uh, old ways of life. You know, whether they're coming from Europe, from South America, from uh, other parts of the U.S., from the Midwest, from the South, from the uh, from, from 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 the East Coast. Uh, California, as I said, is a way of uh, reinventing uh, uh, re reinventing history, reinventing society, and again, I keep harping on this point again and again, reinventing what, what, uh, what oneself. It's a place where people can come and, you might say, be themselves, uh, uh, be themselves independently of what the rest of a, quote, civilized society uh, is uh, prescribing uh, to uh, people at that, uh, at, uh, at, at, uh, at that point in time. Um, so these these chapters, in essence, uh, 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 corresponded uh, and corresponded uh, pretty well uh, to the uh, to the latest sets of readings that you've had so far in the Who Built America text. And uh, you know, in addition to uh, those to those readings you had from last week, you had chapter nine in the Who Built America text, in which the topic was the spread of slavery and the crisis of Southern society. And also there was a PowerPoint on the U.S. Mexico War in California, and the podcast on the. Uh, Antebellum society and westward, uh, westward expansion. So what's happening in the uh, <clears throat> in the story is, of course, just years after the end of the U.S. Me Mexico War, and when the U.S. Mexico War ended with the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848, of course, many Americans had this idea of the right of of, of, of conquest. That once gold was discovered, once the announcement was was made by uh, by James Marshall on John Sutter's property, the feeling was that. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me, sorry, everybody. Uh, the feeling was that uh, that that uh, um, that manifest destiny had had been achieved. Uh, that uh, God was uh, was uh, shining on the American re re Republic. That the uh, U.S. had achieved this uh, providential role 
and uh, the, uh, the, uh, and, uh, and as a result, it was the uh, it was the manifesting for uh, manifest in that context. Everybody, uh, the, uh, it, mainly, it really means uh, uh, obvious. That is, it's the obvious destiny that Americans obviously have had the right, whether they were coming from the north, coming from the south, from the Midwest, uh, to, uh, uh, to to go into uh, to go into these. Uh, in, into these uh, into these regions, especially places like like, like California, and in instance, the gold rush, you might say, confirm this ideology that uh, yes, indeed, uh, God gave this land land to you, this the areas there for the taking. Uh, come on over here, you know. Uh, uh, and let me wrap up on, on this note uh, here. You know, one of the ironies about the uh, uh, about the gold rush uh, is uh, is that of course the uh, the ones who the Europeans who came into the area first to. Uh, uh, Explore and subtle were, of course, the Spaniards. The Spaniards always had this idea of, uh, of finding lands with a with a quick uh, a, a quick riches, uh, instant wealth, and of course all the usual uh, uh, fanciful stuff, the fairy tale stuff of lands of uh, of uh, Amazon warrior women, uh, warrior, women warriors, uh, powerful queens who ruled ruled over the, these warriors, uh, you know, uh, magic lands and uh, um, you know dragons, wizards, that type of stuff. A lot of stuff that, that uh, you know, Cervantes made fun of in the classic Don Quixote book of the uh, of the 17th century. Hmm. Um, but uh, after the successes of, of finding the uh, riches of the Aztec Empire and the Inca Empire, the Spaniards believed that there was much more to be found. That there were some other lands that that could that, that had that wealth. But of course, with the Spaniards, they didn't they didn't find that stuff. Uh, that that is this golden land. These El this, these El Dorado places uh, didn't uh, exist. And when the areas of, of Latin America, Mexico, uh, and of course into California was turned over to the Mexican government, the Mexicans to a lesser extent uh, felt that uh, they could find this wealth too. Of course, they didn't find it. They wouldn't find it magically, but if they put enough time and resource and energy to work the lands, they could find uh, mineral wealth. Uh, but uh, but of course, the Mexicans ne ne never found that because uh, because when the when um, the riches were uncovered, the area was now under U.S. rule. Uh, you might say uh, had the uh, had had uh, James Marshall made that strike maybe about a year or two earlier. Who knows? Things might have been different. In fact, this area could still be under Mexican rule uh, uh, at, at, at this time. Nobody knows for sure. It's just one of those crazy uh, twists of historical fate that. Uh, uh, that, uh, that 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 uh, that that happened. Okay. Well, all right. Well, I just uh, I, I said I I make write this video at about 20, 22 minutes. So we're at twenty two right now. So I'll go ahead and wrap things up here. So uh, there's about four there's four more chapters left in the story. And what I'll do, everybody, is instead of one video in which I talk about all four chapters, uh, I'll release two videos next time in which uh, in which next time in the next video I'll talk about chapters eighteen and nineteen. And then in a, in a video after that, I'll conclude these uh, these videos and talk about the final two chapters, chapters 20, uh, 20 and 21. Okay, everyone, so we're wrapping up with a story. Uh, let's let's see what happens to our uh, our, our friends uh, our friends as we uh, wrap things up. And I'll see you guys again next week in which I talk about chapters uh, 18 and 19.